Hi there. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Our Gifted Garden. My name is Regina and in today's video, I'm going to give you a tour of my garden that I have not seen in almost two weeks. I've not seen this garden in almost two weeks. Yes. Before we get into that, um, I want you guys to go ahead and if you like this video, as soon as you get to that point, please go ahead and click that like button. That really helps YouTube to know that people are enjoying this video and helps them to push it out to more gardeners, which I would greatly appreciate. And of course, if you like content like this, gardening content, I'm growing in Zone 8A in North Texas. But of course, I hope my content can be helpful to others, even not growing in the same climate or zone as well. If that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. And of course, if you work with other gardeners or you, you know, are in gardening groups, please consider sharing this video to other gardeners who you think may find it helpful. All right, so I've been out of town since Tuesday. I want to say it was July 12th is when I left my house. Um, and we went to Boston, went to D.C. We went, you know, on a few different to a few different places, went to Family Union in Massachusetts and then just kind of did a few other sites along the way. And so, because of that, I have not seen my garden in two weeks, and I know it is probably a mess. I mean, I've walked out here, there's lots of things going on that I'm going to have to spend a few days um, getting sorted out. So, while I was gone, the weather, we had rain one day. I want to say it was like two days after I left, which I haven't seen rain, I don't think, since like May. Um, but we did have rain one day, and other than that, we've had temperatures pretty much in the 100s the entire time. I don't use shade cloth, cloth in my garden, so my plants have just had to deal with it. I'm not against shade cloth, I'll make that clear. I don't have any problems with shade cloth. It's just not something that I have or that I've done, and I'd rather not if I don't have to. So I can get away without using shade cloth and grow my garden that way, then that's what I want to do, just because that's one more thing that I would have to do. So I don't have any shade cloth out here. These plants have been enduring the sun. I do try to grow, you know, as I learn, I want to try to grow varieties that can handle the sun for the most part, so I'm not having to do different amenities like that, but just so you know, they've been out here in the sun. Now, for part of the time I was gone, my husband watered the garden because he did join us on the trip, but he wasn't there the entire time. So for the time he was home, he watered the garden, and then my brother watered the garden on the, um, the times when both of us were gone. Um, I don't have any irrigation. I will get some one of these days. Maybe over the winter I'll get some set up for the summer. I don't know, but I don't have any yet, so I hand water. And I can see that there's a sprinkler back here, so my husband or my brother brought the sprinkler <laughs> in to do part of the garden too, which I don't blame them for because it's a lot to water. So that's what's been going on. I know about two days ago my husband harvested okra because I asked him to. I was like, you got to, you know, harvest the okra because <laughs> it will go bad. You know, it gets hard and woody, and that's wasted. Um, okra grows a lot. I have several plants, so it's going to grow me a lot of okra, but I don't like wasting food. So he did harvest that, but otherwise nothing, not that I know of. I told my brother he can harvest anything he wanted to, but I don't know if he did. Um, so as far as I know, nothing else has been harvested from my garden. So there's probably going to be a lot to harvest. And I just want to show you guys what things are looking like. It looks kind of like a jungle, but <laughs> what things are looking like with two weeks of very, very minimal care. Only watering and not much else. All right, so we're going to start. I'm standing over here by my grape vines, my muscadine vines, which actually look pretty good. I still have grapes on them. That's always a good sign. Um, some of them have literally dried up, which is kind of sad, probably because of the heat. But I do have muscadines on them that are still growing and ripening. Um, and then right next to me are my... So you probably hear weed eater lawnmower. Sorry, that's just part of the part of the rollout here, <laughs> especially when it's earlier in the day. People are doing lots. But also next to me are my blackberries, and I'm sad to say I have several blackberries that have dried up and kind of died on the on the plant. I had some that were on here that were red. They were not ready to be harvested, and I guess they became ready and over ready while I was gone. So I'll give you guys a quick look at them. Here are some of those blackberries. Y'all, this makes me really sad, but it's okay. It's just kind of part of the game, right? Sometimes you're gonna have to leave your garden, and that's okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm not gonna do it now, probably this evening, um, 
is I'm going to come out here and I'm just going to cut off all of these ends where the berries are slash were. I'm going to look around, see if I can find any that are ripe and okay, and then let these plants continue to grow. These are Primacane Fruiting Blackberries, Primark Freedom, and they produce essentially all season long, well into the fall. On They produce on this year's canes all season. And then next spring they'll produce on last year's canes. So I'm just going to cut all these tips off. Um, and some of these canes have gotten a little tall anyway. I was waiting for them to grow their berries. And they'll grow more. So it'll be okay. I've lost some of my blackberries. That is okay. That will give me some time to get some of those little mesh bags to um, cover them from the birds because the birds were getting some of them too. So I'm going to shoot a lot of today's video handheld with my camera because I can do that a lot faster than setting up my tripod angle every time. But I'm working on being a little more steady. I'm a one woman show out here. <laughs> so I hope it's not moving too much for you. But yeah, so one of the things that I show you, I'll be trying to do mostly handheld. Sometimes I'll have to put it on the tripod to do things, but yeah, to give you guys a look at what's going on here. Now my trees, my fruit trees have, I don't know if they were already tall or I missed something, but they are going crazy back here. I don't know what this bag is. What is this? But y'all look at these. They are, these trees were sticks. I'm gonna do a whole video on my backyard orchard, but wow, have these things grown. Look at that. They're much taller than me now. Okay, here's me, and here's these trees. Yeah. So other things of note in this area are my raspberries. I do have some coming on, so very excited about those. Now I do have some things to harvest here. If you take a look, look at all those peppers. These are orangey sweet, sweet peppers. So I'm gonna get my pruners and get in here and harvest these real quick. All right, so let me grab these peppers. Give you an up close look. Look how cute they are. Now I'm gonna turn off my camera and grab them real quick. All right, so here's what I got from one plant. Now on the other side of this, I have one more of these plants in this bed, so I'm gonna check that out too. Also, you can see that my basil, and this is, purple basil here. Got this purple basil, this shiso, and this other basil. Oh, that's a, this is the Thai basil. Have all gone kind of crazy. I will be cutting these back soon, maybe like mid-August, so they can grow some new growth for fall and I can make a ton of pesto with fresh new leaves um, that are, have better flavor than they do once they've gone to seed. But yeah, things have gone a little crazy in here. Okay, so here's the other plant, and it looks like I just have one pepper on this one that's ripe. All right. And these plants, like I mentioned, I have a whole bed of peppers. These just ended up here because I didn't um, want to throw away these plants and I have them left over, so I decided to put them here. And here's a quick look at the corn that I have in this bed, this keyhole bed that mostly has my perennials in it. Um, they're looking good. Starting to get, look at that. Nice in here. Okay, so in a couple of weeks. Should have some of these, some of these should be ready. Okay. I'll give them a little shake. As you know, corn pollinates from this pollen up here, landing on the silk down here. And each one of these pieces of silk is tied to one kernel of corn. So if you open up corn and like half of them have kernels and half of them don't, and it's a pollination issue. And so that's why I like to give them a little shake when I'm out here to help kind of distribute that pollen. Now, of course, the wind does that quite a bit, but you know, can't hurt to give it a little help. And here are the muscadines. You guys, a quick look at those. Now, I think I've mentioned this before. These are supposed to be cowart muscadines. But I don't think they are, because last year I had a single fruit and it was bronze. Cowarts are supposed to be dark. Um, so, we will see. 
how this goes. So my husband has been out here, he was out here yesterday working with the weed eater and didn't quite finish. And so my blueberry plants are usually over there, but he has moved them around so he can get in that area and cut some of the grass back. And so they're just kind of everywhere. So I'll just show you, but they're looking really good. I am so excited. I didn't get a ton of blueberries this year, and I actually do have some that are still in the plants that were ripening, but I didn't get a ton of blueberries this year. And I was a little disappointed, but most of my plants are really new. So, well, actually all of them are pretty new. Um, so I'm just excited to see a lot of growth on them, because that means fruit next year. And they are looking, looking really nice. Look, I saw a blueberry. Oh, there's one. There's a powder blue blueberry. I come out here and harvest a few. I'm going to try one of these. That looks really good. Mm. That was really sweet. Okay then. I don't want to harvest blueberries just yet because I don't want them on the bottom of my basket but I'll come around later and harvest any blueberries I see out here that are ready. And here is my okra. I'll give you my back up a little bit. But here's the okra, thriving as usual. Remember, okra loves the heat. You just make sure it's watered and it has plenty of nitrogen and your okra is gonna produce for you. Doesn't matter if it gets to be 105 or 108. Look at that. There's so much okra on here. My husband just harvested several pounds of it the other day. Now okra is something that I like to wear long sleeves when I harvest as the plants are getting tall because it irritates my skin. So I'm wearing short sleeves right now so I'm not going to harvest this okra right now. I'm going to come back and do that this evening and put on some sleeves and take care of it. But just to note, okra, something about the leaves and the stems and the fruit that can irritate your skin, just make sure you wear gloves and long sleeves and you'll be fine. Or if I'm wearing short sleeves, I'll wear my gloves and then just go in and like wash my arms immediately. But I found that it's easier to just wear long sleeves. But yeah, lots of fruit. Look at that. Okra just wants to feed you. So here's a look at my yard long beans. They are doing okay. There's some, if you look at these, sadly, they just stayed on this thing until they were way too ripe. So I'm going to pull those off because they're dried now and I can save those for seeds. And then I do have some down here that I am going to harvest. Oh, look, 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 look. Look, a bumblebee. Which is funny, I rarely see bumblebees on the beans. They usually prefer other things in the garden, but live your life, boo. Also still ants in here, but okay. But yeah, more beans that have gone too long. Um, here are my regular, my green beans. Ugh. These green beans, um, I have some blooms. Maybe I'll get beans soon. Maybe I'll have to wait till fall. I don't know. It's kind of been a, a sad year for beans. So I'm really hoping for a good fall crop. I haven't gotten very many to freeze and last season by this time I had tons because we had such a rainy April and here's my other yard long beans some that have dried been on here too long hopefully that doesn't stunt the plants growth if I see that they're not producing I'll just pull them all off and start over but we'll see how it goes And here's my other uh, green beans, my Triumph of Violetto, and some Kentucky Wonder. All right, I have a few in here I do need to harvest, so I'm going to grab those real quick. Okay, guys, next up, looking at our arch trellis where I have some melons and some cucumbers growing. Okay, so first of all, cucumbers. These um, Armenian cucumbers. Out of control. Look at that. Okay. Now also, 
Y'all look at these, they are so big. Look at that, that is ridiculous. So I'm gonna get these guys off here. I'm surprised they haven't broken their stems. But um, yeah, these things grow fast. Cause I harvested before I left. And yeah. Also though, look, Ugh, cucumber beetle, gross. I have this Charenti, Charentis melon here. And I have one in here. They're small, but they look like they might be ready. And also I have these watermelons. There we go, one there. Look at that stem. And one there. So I'm gonna harvest these guys. And I have one down there. Cause it's been a while and they've been the same size for a while. So I wonder if they're just not growing big because of this heat. So I'm gonna get all of these harvested. And we're gonna see what happens. So, do y'all see that? A gigantic grasshopper. I wanna get these melons. I really don't like grasshoppers. They jump and they're unpredictable and it could land on my head and I think if that happened, I'd probably jump out of my skin and die. So, I'm gonna get this little one and I'm gonna go over to the other side and see what I can do. But, oh my God, y'all, those things freak me out so much, I hate them. <laughs> and my husband is not here to come out here and get this thing for me. So, I'm just gonna have to do what I can, but I'm not getting close to it. Ugh, my skin is crawling. Ugh. Okay, so I got them. My heart was racing like Shaquille O'Neal shooting free throws in the finals, but I did it. All right, so here, so these are the Armenian cucumbers I've harvested. And two watermelons here, and one Sharon Tice melon. So this one, this watermelon, look, it was split on the bottom and there were ants already in it. So that is gonna have to go in the garbage. And then this one has like this big dent, soft spot. So something has gotten to that too, or the environment, I don't know. So, put all these in my basket and I'm gonna keep moving. Actually, I'll probably set them on something because they're too heavy to be carrying around while I'm out here still harvesting. Okay, so now we have arrived at the pepper bed. Lots of ripe peppers in here. You guys, an overview. A little slower. So these are California Wonders here. They're small. I think that that, I think that's just because of the heat. Um, because all my peppers have been kind of small so far this season, but that's okay. As long as we don't get an early frost, I'll, be, I'll have a long season of peppers, so they'll have plenty of time to grow even more larger peppers. And then these tomato plants are taken over my walkway. So, I'll move those. But over here, okay, so I'll go ahead and harvest these that I see in here, and then I'll walk over to the other side of the bed get the rest of them. Okay, so here's the other side of my pepper bed. Lots of ripe peppers in here that I need to take care of, so look at that. Orange ones, red ones, lovely, lovely. So I'm going to get all of these guys harvested. Okay, so harvested a bunch of peppers and also found another Armenian cucumber on the other side of the trellis hanging into the pepper bed. So yeah, that's what we got. Next up, my determinate tomato bed. It's hard to see what is going on in here, but let's see. Oh, look at that. I really hate finding overripe tomatoes. It makes me sad. What a waste. But here we go. There's an early doll. Looks good. Aroma. Oh, 
some in here that are overripe. I'm going to throw away. So I'll just pick the good ones and come back for the other ones because I don't have something to put them in right now. Nice ripe Roma. This one has a little blossom end rot. Okay. Let's see, more tomatoes in here. Nice Roma. A few more. Set my camera down so I can dig in here and see what I find. Okay, so here, you can see in here the tomatoes that I've gotten. Not many, because these plants have pretty much done their main production. I have my seedlings indoors and they're pretty much ready to go outside. So I think this week I want to get to the business of pulling all of these out and replacing them with new plants so that those plants have enough time to set a fall crop before we get a freeze so we can get another round of these romas in. But it is a jungle in here. <laughs> and speaking of jungles, here are my indeterminate tomatoes. They have gone crazy for these two weeks because I haven't pruned them at all because I haven't been here. Um, and they've gotten so tall it's been hard to prune them because I don't haven't decided exactly how I want to do it because I don't want to limit their production. We have a long season, so I want more tomatoes. <laughs> I want to keep getting them, but they're growing wild. But I have a lot of fruit on these plants. Look, these are some sun, or these are Isis candy here. More Isis candy in there. These are the yellow pear. Lots of these, some of these are overripe, unfortunately. So I was gone and they produce so quickly, so many. Um, honeycomb hybrid, more honeycomb hybrid up here, sun peach all through here. Um, this one looks like a chef's choice orange or a terracotta, not sure. And I'm gonna look at the plant tag. And so many small unripe sun peaches. I've got a Costaludo Genovese. Um, definitely a Chef's Choice Orange. So despite the heat, these plants are still pumping out tomatoes. And it is a wild place in here, but I want these tomatoes, so. <laughs> so I'm gonna get all of these harvested. It's hot, it's getting hot out, so I don't want my camera battery, my camera to overheat. So I'll give you guys a look and then I'm going to get these harvested real quick and I'll show you what I get. Okay, so here's my basket way, with the tomatoes that I've harvested in it. Quite a few. Maybe I'll make some more salsa because um, that was a favorite. Everybody loved that. So maybe I'll make some more salsa with these guys. Now next up, take a look here at my nectarine tree. I have nectarines here, and they look like they're ripe. So I think I'm going to go ahead and harvest these guys, see how they're doing. Now let's see. Let me grab one. And I definitely have some pest issues here, but I'm going to grab these guys. Yep, they come off really easily. Let me get the rest of them. Okay, so here are all the nectarines I just harvested. And it looks like pretty much all of them have been attacked by pests. A couple of them have a little pecs in them from birds. Um, yeah, so that's sad. So I guess I'm not going to get to eat any nectarines. I think one or two of them might look okay, but these are going to end up, sadly, in the garbage. I have to learn a little bit more about making sure that my trees don't have pests because it's kind of one of those things, like you only get one fruit set per year, and if the pests get them, they get them. So most of the, it looks like insect, some type of insect damage, um, rather than birds, because they're kind of hidden on this tree, like under the leaves. But a couple of them look like maybe birds, but the rest of them it looks like insect damage, some goo, rotting, things like that. So, <sighs> never fun when that happens, but my trees are young, I'm still, early in the game, so I'll just chalk it up as an L. Move forward. Okay, the last two beds I wanted to show you guys are my peas, my field peas. 
Here's one. And here's the other one where I planted and didn't get much harvest. Pulled out all this grass. The grass is back with a vengeance. Um, but the plants that are here are growing nicely. So I'm just going to, fingers crossed, that more of them come up and then I get a good crop out of these. Because I'm not sure what to do. And then these guys are still producing somewhat. So I'm going to dig through these and see how many peas I can find. I'm being honest, my most, my beans and peas have just not been producing like they did last year. And I know this year has been really, really different, like just the weather, the heat, extreme heat, lack of rain. I'm sure that has gone into it. But I'm kind of disappointed because I hope I get, I hope I can um, ramp these up and get a really good fall crop because field peas are kind of my, I don't really have a source for getting them <laughs> here. So growing them is really the only way and I love them. So I'm hoping that I can really keep these going. These plants that I already have here and then my other bed get some more planted. I might start some in seed starting cells to make sure that they germinate and get those planted because I really need a crop of peas. If I don't get them, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Obviously I'll be fine, <laughs> but I'll be disappointed. So I'm gonna continue to work through that. And as far as my beans grow on my fence, the plants are growing, just not getting a lot of fruit. And I know that's because we've had 100 degree temperatures pretty much every day. Even my yard long beans that have produced some are not producing like crazy. So what I'm probably going to do is let them go and then come mid-August, pull them out and start some new seeds in those beds so that they can have a fresh start for fall and I can get a nice good fall crop. Because last year I didn't get a fall crop because I didn't really do a whole lot for fall. I was just so exhausted by the summer. So this year I'm definitely going to do that, take advantage of the fact that we don't get usually get a first frost until late November, December, sometimes January and hopefully get that done then when the temps are a lot cooler and will be a lot more, um, what's the word, amenable <laughs> for growing things. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do there. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I enjoyed making it and I hope you guys enjoyed getting a look at the garden after it hasn't really been tended in two weeks in the summer Texas 100 degree plus heat. Um, Definitely some things that did not look great, but also some things that are doing well. I am definitely, definitely have some refocusing to do, some things to do for fall. If I want to ensure, well, you can't ensure anything. If I want to increase my chances of getting a really good crop of field peas and a really good crop of green beans this season. So I have some work to do there. But otherwise, I mean, things are doing as well as I can hope in this heat with this lack of rain. So excited about that and grateful for what I have harvested. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut into these melons and do a quick taste of those because I'm sure you're probably as curious as I am as to whether they are ripe, how ripe they are, what they taste like. So I'm gonna do that now. And since I have a big family, I can cut into all of them because we'll probably still eat them all today <laughs> if they're good. So I'm gonna show you guys that. smells so good so good all right I'm gonna set this to the side okay that's number one this one I actually found after I picked the other ones I saw it on the ground behind the ochre bed but I think I see a hole in it so this one might have gotten a little insect damage oh it smells delicious too look at that okay now, this watermelon, last year they were so much bigger, but I don't know. These are the exact same seeds, same seed packet and everything. So I'm just going to cut it open. Let's see if it's ready. Oh, look at that. It looks very ripe. It's a yellow, crimson, sweet watermelon. Yellow, crimson, that's kind of a weird name. Okay, and then this one. This one I wasn't sure about, but it had been on there as long as the others, so the best. Mm. This one looks like it may be a little bit less right. I'm just going to get a fork and now I'm going to taste these. Okay. 
Okay. First off, this guy. Hmm. Tastes like a cantaloupe. I'll get in there. Tastes like a cantaloupe. And it's a little sweet. But it's not very sweet. Smells so good. It has good flavor, but it's not that sweet. Let's try this one. This one doesn't taste good at all. Boo. Okay. Let's try this watermelon. So y'all, I haven't eaten today, so I'm really hungry. So, I'm really sad that didn't taste good. It's the yellow one watermelon. Mmm. This one is sweet. It's good. I think I'm gonna have this for breakfast. If I can hide it from the kids. Other one. Oh yeah, that's a different watermelon. Mm. This one, even sweeter. So, thumbs up. Watermelons, good. These melons, not so good. This one I will eat, it's edible, but it's not that sweet. The watermelons are sweet. This one is gross. Okay guys. I said that I was gonna eat these watermelons for breakfast, but my kids found me, and now they're eating them for breakfast. How do y'all like them? Very good. Love them. All right. Ray, I can't see you. Okay. Amazing. The greatest thing I've ever eaten. Really? David, I give you a plate. So you don't get juice all over the tablecloth. All right. And so go ahead and like this video. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more gardening content from me. Pretty soon I will be starting all of my seeds for fall, probably this week. I need to get all of those going and under the grow light. So come early September, once the temperature's cool enough, I can get them out here into the garden growing these fall crops. And that's it. So thanks again for watching and until we meet again, have a great one. Bye.